nose is, is a bright white area compared to your eyes that are going to be dark around it. So that's, that's here where it would look for bridge of your nose and your eyes. Um, and then, like I say, uh, OpenCV has all this complicated machine learning stuff in it. So um, they, they use that to find the, the correct threshold values for images of different contrast, brightness, etc. Um, here's something that, that is actually simple enough that you could probably write one without you know, graduate level knowledge of uh, computer vision algorithms and so on without doing a lot of research. Uh, a mean shift algorithm uh, is something you can use to uh, track an object, for example, which is something I can show. So for each pixel in an image, what you'd like to do is take the set of neighboring pixels around it within a certain distance, and you can, you can stop if uh, you reach a huge contrast. So color distance applies to the set of pixels you're going to be looking at as well. Um, and then for each iteration that you run the mean shift algorithm, you'll find the mean of that, both spatial and color mean of, uh, of each pixel, and that would serve as the new center for that grouping of pixels. So it, it might be hard to see here. I don't know if I can zoom in on this image a bit. It, it shows uh, pretty well what I mean. So I'm not sure if you can see up here, but the, yeah, I think so. It, it essentially works to eliminate extraneous detail in an image and get at sort of the, the color, the shade of a surface. So in the top left is no iterations have been applied, and uh, there's a lot of detail in, in the hair and the eyelashes and so on. And by the time it's run through several uh, iterations, you can especially see the cheek is, is all washed out. It's all just sort of pink and white. Uh, there's not a lot of detail on it, uh, and so on the, the eye here. You know, lots of detail in the, in the guy's face, um, and that gets washed out. So you can see a really crisp delineation between different parts of the face, right? Uh, different parts of an object. Or at least that's the idea. Um, all right, so one thing I managed to find about a year ago when I was in the lab here was this uh, mean shift based moving object tracker. Um, so the source code is, is at that link at the top, I could follow it, um, we could look at that. It, uh, you, you first start by selecting an object, so uh, in the implementation we did, it was an iPhone app, and you touch the screen where there was an object, so uh, anything that contrasted well with the, the table you, you were looking at or something would work. Um, and so then it would perform a mean shift around that selection, that selected pixel. Um, and then for every frame of the live video stream it was looking at after that, it'll just go through the whole image, looking at these average mean shift values uh, in each frame, and find the closest match to whatever you selected at the beginning. And then it says, oh, that's where the object is this frame. So then if you move your object around in front of the camera, it, uh, it can continue to draw a box around the image, because that's the closest color value, you know, in that square uh, on the next image. Um, so we did manage to get that working on an iPhone. Uh, that was quite a bit of fun. Um, and do various, various fun things to get that actually working. Um, and then that was the beginnings of, that could be the beginnings of a robotic application where it's tracking an object. Um, for us it was the beginnings of an augmented reality application where we rendered on top of the object we were tracking in OpenGL you could render a different object, you could render different things. So you can follow things around and, uh, and replace stuff in, in the environment with 3D graphics. Um, so then, I do, actually, I do actually have these papers here that, that go more into detail on any of the algorithms if you've got any, if you just want to see the, uh, the inside of image-based shaving, for example, that's a fun one. Um, and I have a few videos you could look at if you want to look at um, point clouds or, or simple object recognition. We can also look at that. So, um, any questions? Any particular interests in the group? Jeremy? So the, uh, the application you developed on the iPhone, they say you select the object where it's beginning. That's right. Yeah. Actually, do, do we have that iPhone? Yeah, I thought, I, thought I, I thought you picked it up, but I guess you no, didn't. Right. It wasn't actually here. I, I, I thought you did. 
I thought you successfully actually picked it up. So no, no, I didn't. I just realized in the last 30 seconds that it might not be. But okay, well, why don't you uh, talk about something else and I'll, I'll run and get it. Because I thought okay. it up to here, sorry. Uh, well, like I said, there, there are videos we can watch. And uh, I think earlier here I had something showing the connect. Uh, I wasn't going to show that video before because someone else in class did show it. Um, here. But since you guys aren't in the class. Of course, I want to do that. There we go. I love how these presentations have turned into uh, YouTube parties. You know, just everybody wants to. I want to show my video next. Uh, so here's. I'm tired of seeing people try to, you know, say that it's. Uh, yeah. Incorrectly stated that it's a time of flight camera. This this blog entry. <coughs> Show me the light. Right. <coughs> <coughs> Do you know what range that works at? Like how far? Um, the closest is around maybe a half, and the most distant is something five years away. So I think that uh, very bright. Light from outdoors. Oh, you've seen this, yeah. That's, that's an interesting one, obviously, showing the camera image on top of the depth image. And, uh, the resolution of the depth image isn't so great. You get all these blurs around uh, the edge of objects. Um, but it's, it's pretty darn good for something that a consumer can, can purchase for themselves, of course. Uh, and yeah, the, the iPhone has, has appeared, so I pass around this app. Uh, I wrote it over a year ago, but... Um, yeah, this is, this is a good one. This one doesn't do OpenGL on top or anything, but um, let me see. Do you have a jailbreak to, to run that app? Yes. I, I had to, not only did, you, did we have to jailbreak the iPhone, but uh, we also had to, um, because the, the API to get at the camera data wasn't open on this old iPhone, um, you had to use an internal API, the PL camera controller class. Um, and so various people, you know, uh, better hackers than I had uh, reverse engineered the header for that, and uh, someone had actually figured out where in that uh, object the camera data uh, was, and so you've got a, a void pointer that you just set to that value, right? And, uh, and then you interpret that as a character array, and it all works. Um, but yeah, it was it was a hack on top of a hack kind of thing to get it to actually to actually do what it's doing now, which is just show the, the viewfinder image um, on, in, in my own app. Uh, the only thing the open API actually lets you do is start the camera app, and then it returns you the, the high resolution photo that the user took, right? So to get access to this data was a bit trickier. 
Um, let's see, can you I... Didn't, you didn't actually have to... It, it would not have to be jailbroken to do what you're doing now, is that correct? Um, in this app, like uh, that, that hack at getting at that viewfinder that was not jailbreak required, but you needed it to kind of do other things? Well, that, that, I think, I'm pretty sure that required jailbreaking. I'm not oh, sure. Okay. Well, that doesn't it, matter. In, yeah. just in general, jailbreaking was very useful for other things as well, like being able to communicate through SSH and, and so on. But, uh, yeah, I, I think, I, I, I mean, I, yeah, maybe. I, these days, can't you just go to a website, jailbreakthis.com or something? I'd rather not mess around with um, <laughs> I don't know if you can, you can see what's going on there when I hold up, uh, when I hold up an object to it. Can you can you see it all on the iPhone? Just pass it around. Yeah, I can just I can just pass it around. But I mean, it's it's obvious what it's doing if you do. This one is uh, as optimized as I could get it, of course. So yeah, I'll, I'll pass this around. I think actually I should pass that if I if I tuck in a new locker. Okay. Well, I'll close down the recorded portion of this talk.